Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, today we've got an unboxing of the Tommy's War uh, 1 in 32 scale trooper from the Warwickshire Yeomanry. Uh, if anybody's got a long memory you'll know I picked this up at Telford last year and I did do the Turkish soldier uh, which I bought separately on knowing that uh, they actually put this together as a vignette. Uh, I mean, obviously you can buy them separately, which I did, but uh, they often display them as a vignette. Uh, I just bought the Turks soldier because uh, obviously I've got this as well. So um, I've always wanted to do a mounted figure uh, on a, a the Great War is my type of main study. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've got books on tanks, aeroplanes, anything that that comes across, you know, I come across that. Uh, I'm interested at the time, like most of us, like a butterfly. But the Great War is my main, uh, my main topic. Uh, mainly, to be honest with you, 14 to 15. Uh, but uh, I enjoy other top parts of the Great War as well. So, anyway, without further ado, we shall have a look what's in the box. Right, guys, uh, I've undone the, or opened the box, which obviously I'd, I've looked at it a couple of times uh, in the uh, preceding almost a year now. Uh, Let's just have a quick look at the uh, instruction manual. Yes, there is an instruction manual because, uh, as it was quite self-evident, unless you <laughs> unless you ride horses, uh, you're, you're going to need some help in uh, in working out where everything goes. And I am one of those people. So you get your instruction manual. Uh, if you do want to visit Tommy's War, uh, there's your uh, address. Uh, Tommy's War produce uh, miniatures from the Great War, or you might call it World War One. And here we got we've got a bit of artwork, well not artwork, but the painted figure. Uh, a brief uh, introduction to the trooper of the Warwickshire Yeomanry. What you'll need for the uh, for putting the figure together. How to uh, you know assess what what needs to be cut off and, and how to do it. Again, more preparation work on the horse. Fitting the bridle and reins, which is a photo etch. How one would be on a uh, reenactor's horse. Again, fitting the bridle and the reins, uh, fixing the equipment, and again, beautiful painted figure. Uh, I just hope I can do the same. Probably not <laughs> in my painting skills, but I could have got a Napoleonic figure. You know, obviously I paint a lot of Napoleonics, uh, but the Great War is my actual thing. So. Uh, Bear with me one minute guys, I think we'll actually, rather than rattle through bags, we'll actually get them out of the bags first. Right, first two bags opened. We have our horse in two halves. So I would imagine, I don't suppose we're going to get to be able to fit that on with that plug there, I'll have a look. I imagine we're going to have to be doing a bit of filling, sanding, whatever. Well, we'll work our way around it anyway. Obviously we've got holes for different bits of equipment. A uh, bit of flash. Usual casting plugs to remove. The the resin is very light, very light. Um, uh, nothing more I can say about it really. There doesn't seem to be any blemishes particularly. Maybe they've got some natural sinews and blood vessels obviously in the horse itself which is lovely to see. Very pleasing so far, a bit of mould lineage, but again, nothing that a, a light sanding stick won't, uh, or a bit of sanding paper won't take care of. Right, guys, we've got our saddle here. Let's get a bit closer. And when I first started working with resin, I was absolutely terrified. It really <laughs> filled me with a lot of fear. Uh, but to be honest with you guys, 
um, removing these plugs it's not too difficult um, don't just take I just have to have a scalpel here although quite a blunt one don't just take a scalpel to them uh, although this is extremely light resin uh, if you can use a razor saw uh, you know if you really have to use a scalpel take very tiny slithers off but you never know if you're going to if you're going to damage a piece of, of resin um, you know so just be careful my my advice is if 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 possible use a razor saw now something like this center plug you may well have to if you can't get a if you can't get a saw blade in there um, you know you just have to gently work it with your scalpel uh, but these are all resin resin plugs from the pouring uh, process and we've got all our blankets there fascinating little topic in itself uh, how you know how the how the guys are mounted and whatever just thought I should actually show it the right way up and it <laughs> would help wouldn't it yeah go on Gav <laughs> yeah go on that's how they used to mount them <laughs> yeah I was holding it upside down sorry guys uh, but yeah um, obviously uh, the guy is actually in a in a mounted pose. I'm just because he's actually leaning out with a saber, so I'm just saying whether you needed to to be absolutely tidy with with cleaning that last plug out in the middle. But uh, I always think if you can be tidy in your painting, tidy in the prep work, which I'm not. But I've got to really pick up on my prep work. It, uh, it needs a lot more work. Never mind my painting. But yeah, blankets and whatever. Let's show the horse's head. Uh, this is a fly screen over the top. Uh, trying, it's you know they were absolutely pestered with flies in Palestine. Uh, the yeomanry, yeomanry in the UK are uh, uh, like we call them reserves. We used to be called ter or they used to be called territorials uh, for the infantry and that. And the cavalry have always been called yeomanry, um, but uh, the Territorials and all that have been now been called just standard reserves. Um, but our yeomanry then were, were militia, stroke, part timers anyway. You know, weekend soldiers, and uh, th they we we use them uh, obviously in Palestine, Mesopotamia, which is now modern day Iraq, uh, and Salonika as well. I don't know about Italy, I don't know about France, uh, but most of the yeomanry, and obviously Australian light horse famously as well over there, but we're, we're talking yeomanry here. So um, We've got standard, they put the bandolier around the horse's neck, but great detail on the, on the bridles. Be nice and careful uh, removing that casting plug. Again, it's extremely light, extremely light. Again, have to be a bit careful on that just to make sure we've got the the correct fit to the horse. We've got the legs and torso all in one. Again, bandolier. Now the reason I'm, I've shown this after after what seems like a an age is um, I've uh, I'll put the link in the uh, description to the Western Front Association uh, and it's a it's an association that I'm not in it but I I, um, I visit their channel and watch the they put up lectures and things on on. And although they are the Western Front Association, yes, they put lectures up, and it was one of their lectures that was mentioning the yeomanry uh, in the Sinai Desert. And uh, I thought I've never shown that uh, that mounted figure, and I, I really should uh, get on and, and get some work done on it. Uh, but uh, so that's what's brought this to mind, anyway. <laughs> right, guys, saving you the noise of the bags again. Uh, we've got uh, several pieces. So let's get on with it. We've got the arm with the sabre. The sabre is extremely thin. Uh, slight bend in it. 
and kink to one side. As I say, I, I'm I'm never a big fan of these these blooming blades. I mean, this one wasn't supported. It would have been nice to see that supported in some cardboard because it is very thin. I do prefer when manufacturers, um, you know, stick a cardboard uh, bit of cardboard to it uh, just to support thin thin blades and and anything else that's uh, that needs supporting really. But uh, on a casting plug again, we can't get away from that. We've got the scabbard, again slight uh, slight kink on it. Mm. That's a bit weird. Hang far a second or I'll just see if we've got any other doesn't look like we've got another another arm. And we've got a full uh, a full um uh scab full sort of sabre there, cavalry sabre is the word I was after. And we've got it so I can't see any other arm as if to give you a couple of options. So whether that's a standard well that's obviously going to have to be removed because there's not another arm to give you a second choice for, for any reason that I can see. Uh, here's our other arm which I take it will have with the with the uh, reins. So I whether they're just using a standard, a standard, uh, you know, there, there's no real difference. I mean, don't get me wrong; you can cut that off. I mean, that's not a, it's not a huge, a huge thing. But yeah, so they've obviously got, uh, I'd imagine, pre-made uh, things for other, other, um, other figures. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. It happens with me. Now yeah, we've got our tail for the horse. Bits of flash everywhere, but that's not. A, it's only that really thin stuff. Let's have a look at our face. Face is very nice. Again, this is one in thirty-two scale. Might need a tiny bit of clean up under the sun helmet. It's nice goggles. Usually the, uh, I don't know if it's a regimental or brigade or divisional flash that they have. Got a bayonet. Because these would often fight mainly as, as almost mounted infantry. Uh, they're obviously trained to use a sabre. Uh, the Australian Light Horse, if I remember, they, they famously went into battle wielding their 18 inch bayonets. Uh, and they, I think, I do believe right towards the end of the campaign, they did get uh, sabres. Whether they were actually trained to use them, uh, I, I don't know. And that's not being derogatory. Uh, it takes it takes some training to be able to to obviously advance horses together knee to knee whatever they, they do you know well, not cavalrymen but you know it's it's not just a case of give a guy a sword and he can whack somebody as he rides past it's it's uh, an art in itself and it takes training so uh, but yeah so so they could be used in that role but quite a lot of the times it was it, they were often used as mobile infantry you know get to you know, get to a point, dismount, horse holders hold the horses and then go go in on foot. Not always, I'll say they, they they could obviously they were trained to use this the sabre as well. It looks like we've got looks like we've got the bayonet there again. I'll work it all out when we get in the instructions properly. Different feed bags there for the horse by looking for the oats. Common bread bag. And I'm not even sure if that, yes, I think that is something. <laughs> Probably the sunscreen for the back of the helmet, I think, actually. Yeah, I think that's what it, that is. Right, guys, uh, last little bit now, keeping the bag. You've got a tiny piece of photo etch, which is the uh, bridle bits, I believe. A uh, bit of uh, what we say, um, whatever. <laughs> but it's going to be used for rope. I would, Im I would imagine it's been used for rope for the for the pegging out the horse. Um, I presume. 
again without uh, reading the instructions in front of you. And then the last but not least, you get a just a certificate of authenticity. Uh, I would say, uh, doing Gav's bit here, if you can, don't buy, don't buy recasts from China, knockoffs or whatever. It's killing the industry. Um, you know, with all with all the recasting that's going on, uh, eventually people will stop sculpting, building figures, uh, making figures, whatever. Because what's the point? The minute they do it, somebody buys it and then starts recasting it and it's just destroying people's jobs uh, people's livelihoods so if you could remember try and buy auth authenticated stuff yes it's more expensive uh, you know yes these are hard times uh, and believe me I'm on my knees <laughs> but but I won't buy, I, well I do my best not to buy recasts and when I say I do my best what I'm saying is occasionally you just don't realise you bought one and that, I, I don't believe that's happened to me yet but it, it will I suppose at some stage but the more people that buy recast uh, the, the, you know, you're, you're just putting people out of a job in my opinion uh, and there is a big, you know, there's, there's a big movement of us that, that uh, paint figures, busts, you know, display figures, whatever just saying please don't buy them um, because eventually there'll be nobody left or the only people left making figures will be in China and it's not just China that's doing it but obviously that's where a lot of it goes where a lot of people are recasting uh, it's just like the Wild West they're just you know taking taking people's uh, intellectual property and just uh, just doing their own thing with it Anyway, that's Gav doing his little bit of a his little bit of a rant, I suppose, if you want to call it that way. All in all, very nice figure, scaring me to death already. Uh, but I really need to get my finger out and have a go because I'm broadening my horizons a bit. You know, I've painted that bust, which I've got to do the last bit in the next couple of days. Uh, I've got that bust. I've got the dragoon bust to do when. Let's just put that up there so we see. Uh, do the dragoon bust when I'm ready to do it, which won't be that far away, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I always said I wanted to do a horse. It's been a year now and I still haven't done one. So I really should get my finger out. <laughs> but I must admit, it is terrifying all the little bits. But hey, come on. If I can half stick tanks together. But then again, look at me. When I do stick a tank together, it's usually wrong. <laughs> so I expect the horse's head to be on upside down or something. But no. Uh, if, you, if you're into the Great War or you fancy something different rather than the, the Napoleonics and, and American Civil War and World War II, uh, think about visiting Tommy's War and uh, having a look what they do. Uh, Western Front stuff, so, you know, the Somme, the usual, the usual stuff like that, but there's also uh, things like this, you know, for, from the, uh, you know, from, from the Sinai, Palestine, uh, Mesopotamia, all that type of stuff. Thank you very much for having a look at this unboxing. I do appreciate it. Sorry it's taken so long to actually open this one up as I did buy it back in November of last year. Uh, it was only, to say, watching that Western Front Association uh, lecture on a, on a particular battle in the Sinai that, uh, that reminded me that I hadn't done it. So take care of yourselves, guys. Uh, hope everything's going well with you and we'll catch each other as usual very soon on another video. Cheers.